It was 1919, just seven months after the end of the Great War, and the world statesmen were gathered at the Palace of Versailles to redraw the map of the world. Shrimp. Cannibal. Pestiferous varmint. The President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, did not have a high opinion of the Prime Minister of Australia. But William Morris Hughes didn't give a damn. <laughs> Two years earlier, the Labour Party had expelled him from its ranks. Yet here he was, still the PM, and now backed by a whopping parliamentary majority. Billy Hughes had secured an independent presence for Australia at the post-war negotiating table. Australia had expended much blood and treasure. Hughes wanted to see that it got its fair share of the spoils. Wilson, a professor of jurisprudence and a former president of Princeton University, had joined the war reluctantly and late. He had grand schemes and high ideals, not much interested in military affairs or the common soldier. He envisaged a peace based on decolonization, disarmament and a league of nations. But when push came to shove, it would take more than a supercilious manner and some highfalutin cant to shut Billy Hughes up. A former Shearer's Union organizer, Hughes had earned his law degree at 40, part-time. An eager warmonger, the little digger, wanted to hang the Kaiser, reduce Germany to penury, and parcel out its possessions to the victors. The bone of contention was German New Guinea. It will be declared a trustee territory of the new League of Nations. But Hughes considered it Australia's strategic front door and reckoned the size of Australia's casualty list entitled it to outright ownership. Mr. Hughes, am I to understand that Australia is prepared to defy the opinion of the whole civilized world? Pardon me? Are you prepared to defy the opinion of the whole civilized world? That's about the size of it, Mr. President. I speak for 60,000 dead. In due course, on a glorious June day, the dignitaries assembled in the Hall of Mirrors to affix their signatures and seals to the Treaty of Versailles. The civilized world got the League of Nations, and Australia got New Guinea.